The crowd went wild. This was just a simple boxing fight. The first date of the tournament that I hoped to win. A lot of people had their bets on my victory. And Ava's opponent, the strong, the almighty, Abigail the Wrecker! Again, the crowd went wild. I watched as my opponent entered the ring. But when I saw her face, my blood stopped moving. It was my sister, Abigail. Except my sister had been missing for 10 years. Hi guys, my name's Ava and I'm from Texas. Make sure you like and subscribe. My sister Abigail and I were twins and we were the bestest friends ever. We did everything together. One time we even broke our left arm together at the same time when we fell off a trampoline. Ow! Wow, this is so cool. We're broken arm twins. I loved Abigail so much. She was my other half. But then one day, our lives were ruined. Our parents took us out on a camping trip. But when we woke up the next morning, Abigail was missing. We searched for days and days, but there was no sign of her. After several years had passed, we started to believe we'd never see her again. And yet, here I was standing in a boxing ring across from my opponent, my long lost sister. Abigail! Is that really you? Yeah, what do you want? Did she not recognize me? I turned to my parents who were watching in the crowd, and I could see their shocked faces. The bell rang, signaling the beginning of the match. Abigail, where have you been all these- <clears throat> Black filled my vision and I lost consciousness. When I came to, the crowd was going crazy as my sister celebrated her victory. What a twist, folks. Ava the Destroyer, the most anticipated winner of this tournament, is out in the first round. I struggled to get up. My head hurt. But then I spotted my sister again, and my heart leaped. Abigail! I ran towards her and hugged her. Ah, oh, get off me! What's wrong with you? Abigail, I've missed you so much! What? I don't know you. Security! Suddenly, security appeared and ripped me off Abigail. Wait, Abigail, sweetie, don't you remember us? Why should I? We were left speechless. My sister comes back after years, but she doesn't even know who we are? How could this be? After the boxing match, we tried to find her again to talk to her, but she seemed to have disappeared. We tried to get into contact with her manager, but the lines were dead. What do we do? We can't lose her again. Not like this. I'm gonna hire a private investigator. We'll find her again. Don't worry. I searched for local private investigators online, and one popped up. His name was Jaya Webner. He claimed to have 100% success rate. You're my guy. The next day, I arrived at his office. Um, excuse me, miss. Do you have an appointment? I can't wait. This is an emergency. No, wait. He... I opened the door and immediately felt my face blush red. There was the private investigator, but he was shirtless. And damn, he looked good. He was punching a punching bag, and when he looked up at me, he scowled. I'm busy. I took a deep breath and walked in. I'm sorry, Mr. Webner, but I can't waste any more time. My sister is missing. <sighs> no. I'm very busy with tons of other cases at the moment. Now leave. Ugh! How rude! I wasn't gonna let this guy walk all over me. Uh, excuse you! My sister needs your help, and you're just gonna abandon her? Ugh, fine, look. I'll do it for a fee. I can pay you 10k. That's all I got. <laughs> 10? My bare minimum rate is 50. Sorry, sweetie. Ain't gonna happen. He continued to punch at the bag, and I grabbed hold of it suddenly. Eyes aflame. How about this? I beat you in a sparring match, and you agree to take my 10k. If I lose, you take the 10k for yourself, and I leave. And we never have to see each other again. Mr. Webner smirked. <laughs> Deal. You're gonna regret this, little girl. I've taken martial arts for five years. Don't think I'll go easy on you. His next words were snatched from his lips as I pounced on him. He was instantly knocked out. Ah! What did you do to him? Relax, he's fine. I grabbed a vase of flowers, dumped the flowers, and splashed his face with the remaining water. <laughs> uh, where am I? Wake up, princess. Wow. You really knocked me out, huh? He looked impressed. Uh, what's your name? Ava. Okay, Ava. I'll help you.
Thank you, Mr. Webner. Please, call me Jaya. The next day, we spent the whole time in his office working on leads. No matter how many times we called Abigail's boxing manager, the call went dead. That's it. Come on. Where are we going? To wake up the lazy sleazeball himself. An hour later, we pulled up at the manager's house. I have no idea how Jaya found his home address, but I was starting to believe this 100% success rate. When we arrived, Jaya walked straight up and knocked on the door. Hello? Who are you? What do you want? Good afternoon, Mr. Langley. My name's Jaya Webner. I was wondering if you could put me in contact with your client, Abigail. We've called you many times. You're the one who's been calling me nonstop. Listen, if you want to interview Abigail, reach out to her yourself. No, wait, please! She's my sister. She disappeared years ago and I just want to talk to her. The coach stared at me for a while, then burst out laughing. <laughs> That's the lamest excuse I've heard yet. He slammed the door in our faces. Great. Just perfect. I turned around and stormed off. Hey, Ava. He grabbed my shoulder. It's okay. We'll find her. Suddenly, tears welled in my eyes. Where was this coming from? And then I burst out sobbing, leaning into Jaya's chest. I just miss her so much. I thought I'd never see her again. But now she's back. But she still feels so far away. <laughs> I know. I know. It's gonna be okay. I pulled away, and there was something about the look on Jaya's face. <laughs> Let's go. A week passed, and we still hadn't gotten any more leads. But then one day, while I was having a relaxing bath, my phone rang and I rushed to answer it. Hello? Hey, Ava. It's Jaya. I found your sister. What? Really? Yeah, one of my guys spotted her at the grocery store. I'll pick you up now. Oh my god! Okay! Jaya picked me up, and he drove us over to the grocery store nearby. We ran inside and searched for someone who looked exactly like me. And finally, we found her in the milk aisle. Abigail! Huh? Oh my god, you again? Are you a stalker or something? Abigail, it's me! Your sister, Ava! Sister? What are you talking about? Can't you tell? We look exactly alike! Whatever, that's just a coincidence. I don't have a twin. I... I would have known that. Excuse me, Abigail. I'm Jay Webner, private investigator. We've been searching for you for a long time. Jaya explained everything to Abigail, about how I had lost my twin years ago, and she's been missing ever since. Wait, is this actually true? Yes! Well, I think I believe you, because many years ago, I woke up and lost my memories. Where did you say I disappeared? On a camping trip. That's right! I was just a kid, and I remember falling over and hitting my head. Another family found me when I woke up, and I had no memories of anything before my fall. All I knew was that my name was Abigail. This other family raised me as their own, and I've been living in England. It's only after I found a passion for boxing that I moved to the States. So, you're actually my sister? I am! Oh my god! We hugged tightly. I'm so sorry for being rude to you before. That's okay. And I'm sorry for punching you in the face. <laughs> That's okay, too. That night, I brought Abigail to my house, and I introduced her to our parents. Oh, my baby! Mom crushed her in a hug. Darling, give her some space to breathe now. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just... Oh, I've missed you so much! <laughs> we had dinner and caught up on all the years we'd missed out on. My foster parents sent me to a boarding school and sort of... Well, they just abandoned me. You're lucky to have your parents, Ava. All that matters now is that we're together. I was so happy to have my sister back again. After dinner, we were chilling in the living room when the doorbell rang. I'll get it. I opened the door to find Jaya there. Jaya! Oh, do you want to come in for some dinner? We still have leftovers. No, that's all right. Um, listen. It seems my work here is done, so, uh, I'm flying to New York tonight. What? Yeah. I had been planning on moving for a while, but then you turned up and I had a reason to stay then. But now, <clears throat> well, now we have no reason to hang out with each other anymore. But I... Yes? I, um, never mind. No. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to say goodbye. We hugged and he turned to leave, but before he could, I suddenly ran over to him and kissed him. After a while, we pulled apart. That was unexpected. Please don't go. I, I think I like you. You do? Oh god, I feel so embarrassed!
No, don't be, because I think I like you too. We kissed again. Um, are you two lovebirds done licking each other's faces? <laughs> Sorry. Jaya, I'll see you tomorrow? Yeah, uh, see you tomorrow. <sighs> the next day, Abigail moved back home. She wasn't really close to her foster parents, so we were the closest thing she had to family. Mikasa Esukasa. Thanks, Ava. We shared one bedroom, but after a few days, I discovered that Abigail was super messy. She would leave her clothes everywhere, leave food from days before, and never cleaned up her bed. It was like living in a pigsty. Me, on the other hand, I always kept my stuff sparkly clean. Um, Abigail, do you think you could maybe clean up a little? Are you telling me what to do after everything I've been through? No, no! Sorry, um, you're right. <clears throat> What was that? I hadn't seen this side of Abigail before. I thought I knew my twin, but in the next few weeks, I discovered that I didn't know her at all. I got a call one day from my older manager. Ava, good news. I managed to squeeze you into the upcoming boxing match in your city. Think of it as your great comeback. Really? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You won't regret this. Who was that, honey? I told them the good news, and my parents hugged me tightly. Oh, this is amazing. No matter what happens, we're proud you're our daughter. I smiled, but when I looked up, I noticed Abigail staring at us from the kitchen. She looked so angry. I wanted to call her over, but she left before I could. Weird. That same evening, I headed out to meet Jaya at the park for a date, but I bumped into Abigail on the way out. Where are you heading? Um, to meet Jaya. Oh, good. I'll come with you. Um, it's not really... Ready. Oh, okay. Great. Now she wanted to butt in on my date with Jaya, too. We met Jaya at the park, and he handed me a bouquet of flowers. Hey, uh, what's your sister doing here? I wanted to see her handsome face again. Did Abigail really just say that? Jaya was my boyfriend. Why was she calling him handsome? Oh, um, thanks. Don't mention it, hot stuff. Okay, uh, should we start walking? Throughout the whole evening, Abigail was totally flirting with Jaya. It was so weird. Was my sister trying to make me jealous on purpose? I've got my comeback boxing match coming up. You can make it, right? Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Ugh, the only reason you got that match is because I beat you instantly in our first match. I'm a much better boxer than you. Um, yes, Abigail, that is true. But in our first match, I just found my long-lost twin. I think it's safe to say I was at a disadvantage. What? Are you saying you can beat me? I'm just saying, you want to go now, huh? Huh? Whoa, whoa, Abigail. Let's all just relax here. Oh, fine. Consider yourself lucky. And then she stormed off. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Was my twin a jerk? This was not how I expected our reunion to be. Weeks later, after training day after day, it was finally time for my comeback boxing match. I waited in the prep room for my announcement as I walked on stage. The door opened and my family and Jaya walked in. We just want to wish you luck before you went on stage. Thank you. We're so proud. Thanks, Dad. Good luck, babe. Please don't try to get too hurt. I prefer your face the way it is. <laughs> I'll try. I waved as I left, and then it was just me and Abigail. Listen, Abigail, I think we started off wrong. I know this sounds weird, but I can't help but feel like you don't like me. Well, you're not wrong. Huh? You don't deserve this life. I deserve this life. It should have been you who lost your memories. But you have the loving parents, the amazing boyfriend, a successful career. And what do I have? Nothing. That's not true. Now, now you do have a family. A little too late, don't you think? But anyways, I guess we can cross off the successful career off that list of yours. Huh? Yeah, you're not getting on stage. Wait! I ran forward and tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. She locked me in. How could she? Hours passed and I yelled and screamed for help, but no one came. Finally, after ages, the door opened again and everyone was there. Ava, what happened? Abigail happened! She locked me in here! <gasps> what? How could you do this? Hm. I don't need you guys. I'm leaving tomorrow to go back to England. I can see I'm not wanted here. But- And she left without another word. That was the last time I'd ever see her. I was sad to see my sister go, but I could see we weren't the twin besties we used to be. Luckily for me, I had Jaya there. And one day, on a romantic walk along the beach, 
He got down on one knee and proposed. Ah! Yes! As we planned our wedding, I couldn't help but have this very strong feeling that our wedding should be in Thailand, at a specific hotel. I can't explain the feeling, but it felt like a magnet pulling me into this specific location. Thailand? Sure. Months later, we arrived at the hotel in Thailand. It was beautiful. I walked into the lobby and then ran into myself. Well, not myself. My twin! Abigail? Ava? What, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? I'm, I'm getting, getting married. married! Oh. <laughs> you go first. I met my old boyfriend and we got back together and, well, we're getting married. Wow. Me and Jaya decided to seal the deal too. That's great! Silence stretched between us. Then... I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry for everything. I've been the worst sister in the world and I realize that now. I just... I was just jealous of you. I wanted your life. Can you forgive me? Of course I can forgive you. You're my sister. My twin. We're bound for life. What a coincidence we both picked Thailand, huh? It sounds weird, but I had a gut feeling I had to have my wedding here. Really? Me too. Weird. <laughs> You're so funny. I teased my older twin, Hendril, with a pat on her back. Yeah, I know. But I'm funnier, lol. Hendril's smile suddenly turned upside down. You think you're funny? What exactly is funny about you? Huh? Tell me, tell me how you're funnier. Chill, sis, I was just kidding. A simple joke, you don't have to take it so seriously. Oh, wow, you're saying that I overreact all the time, right? Hendril's smiling eyes turned red as she stared at me with contempt. She suddenly picked up some plates at the dining table and flung them straight at my face. Before I could realize what was happening, my parents had jumped into the scene. My dad threw me away from the flying plates just in time, but he couldn't leave just as fast. He dodged about two of the plates, but the last few came straight for his face and knocked him out. Thankfully, these last couple of plates were plastic, unlike the first glass ones that smashed on the living room walls, so no serious damage occurred. Oh my god, Dad, are you okay? Stay back! Don't come any closer! I still can't believe I gave birth to an evil daughter like you! It's not my fault, Mom! I was just having a mood swing! Get out! Get out! Get out! Hendril gave me an evil glare before stepping into our bedroom. God. I had to meet that madwoman in my room again. I wish we had separate rooms. I quickly ran towards dad who was being helped by my mom on the spot where he'd passed out. It took him a few seconds to wake up. I'm so sorry, dad. I didn't mean to let you get hurt. You have nothing to apologize for. Where's your sister, by the way? In our bedroom, I guess. Go make sure she's all right. Are you kidding me right now? You want to make sure the villain of this story is okay? Why? so she can live to fight another day. My dad <laughs> burst into laughter. My wife is so dramatic, isn't she, honey? He turned to me. Extremely <laughs> dramatic. I laughed with him. Great. Everyone's against me now. Don't worry. I'll go talk to her. Just try not to come out with a broken head this time. My dad <laughs> laughed in reply as he entered our bedroom. I really hope he doesn't come out with a broken head. Hendril was always like this. An angel one minute and a demon the next. We'd put up with it for years and years, but she only seemed to get worse. The therapy and love we'd showered on her didn't seem to be working, and honestly, we were already tired of her bad behavior. No one was as tired as my mom, though, who'd been at the receiving end more times than anyone. She was done with soft love and was now handling Hendril with tough love. She became the bad cop while my dad took over from her as the good cop. I went to bed scared that night, wondering what Hendril would do again, but luckily she did nothing. I slept peacefully and woke up as energetic as ever. I woke up to someone calling my name in the most melodious voice possible. It sounded like, <laughs> wait a minute, was that Hendril? I got up with a start. What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I'm waking you up so you don't get to school late again. I looked at the wall clock in our bedroom. It was 6.30 a.m. Well, why? My alarm rings at 6 a.m. and you always switch it off so I get to classes late, so why are you trying to be good today? Wait a sec. Why didn't my alarm ring at 6 a.m.? Why are you waking me up at 6.30? Hendril? Duh. 
Isn't it obvious? I switched off your alarm so you'd miss the school bus as usual. But I just felt bad for you and your vulnerability, you know? I decided to have mercy on your poor soul and show you some kindness. Ain't I a good person, little sister? Amazing. You're an amazing person, Hendril. You amaze me every single day. Thank you. Now come on, let's move. Hendril was nice to me and everyone else throughout the week. And although we were freaked out, we just stayed cool. My dad was the happiest among us. He just kept grinning ear to ear. We could only wonder what he'd said to Hendril to make her change all of a sudden. Because of this good behavior, mom started going back to her old, over-loving self, and Hendril was very happy about this. Unfortunately, everything came crashing down one evening. Hendril barged into the living room that evening. She swung the front door with so much strength that it almost shattered and left it open behind her as she walked towards her room angrily. Honey, what's the problem? My mom ran straight at her, but she pushed her aside, throwing her on one of the living room cushions. I ran towards the door and closed it. Baby, whatever it is, you can definitely tell us. Hendril paused after hearing Dad's loving voice and replied begrudgingly. Francis broke up with me, and it's all your fault! Francis? That gothic illiterate? He's my boyfriend, and I love him! Of course you do. That doesn't change the fact that he's an illiterate, though. Look, my baby, you're an amazing woman. You can do a hundred times better than that dude, believe me. But I don't want anyone else, Dad. I only want Francis. I'm tired of this charade. I'm no longer pretending to be someone I'm not. I'm not a nice person, and I can't ever be. Just try a little bit. Hendril walked straight into her room and banged the door. Her character became much worse after this event, and Mom avoided her even more. Two years after trying everything he could to change Hendril and failing, my dad called me into his room. Heather, I know you've had to be the mature one for most of your life, and I'm sorry about it. Hendril isn't a bad child. She just needs more love than normal. Remember that you're not just sisters, but twin sisters. No matter what, her bad character will always reflect on you, and you can actually help her change it. You're just not trying hard enough. Dad. I know, I know. It's not easy. Dealing with Hendril never is. But please, make this sacrifice. Do it for me and your mom. Do it for Hendril. Do it for yourself. Do it for your family, please. I thought long and hard about my decision with my father and wondered what to do to make Hendril a better person. But I kept coming short of ideas. Suddenly, a crazy idea popped into my head on one cold, windy afternoon. It was kind of a stupid idea, but it was an idea nonetheless. Hendril always complained that she acted out 60% of the time because of how people treated her, and people treated her this way because of her existing bad character. So, what if I turned things and made people unable to judge her solely based on her previous actions? I was the angel, and Hendril was the demon. What if no one could distinguish between the angel and the demon? Then everyone would be forced to treat us equally, and that would mostly be in a nice way. We were already identical twins. All that we needed was to change our dress sense and mannerisms and make them the same. Simple. I talked to Hendril about this, and after a lot of going back and forth and pretending to be uninterested, she finally caved because it was going to be a fun experiment. We became one. We spoke alike, answered together whenever any one of us was called, dressed and acted alike. At some point, it became difficult for our parents, classmates, teachers, and friends to differentiate between us. But something was about to bring the walls of my hard work crashing down, and it was closer than everyone expected. Like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. I'm sure you don't want the walls of your hard work to come tumbling down too. So do it now. Things changed. Hendril became more happy over time. Her mood swings reduced, and our parents were very pleased. And then, the day of reckoning arrived. Our 18th birthday fell on the same night as our prom night, so we decided to celebrate the two of them together. The night began in all its awe and glory, and everything seemed to be magical, until a cleaner mistakenly knocked Tendril over, ripping her dress and throwing her new iPhone into a bowl of punch in the process. Before the cleaner could apologize, Hendril picked her up by her hair and dipped her face in the punch bowl. 
After this, she picked up the cleaning bucket the cleaner was holding and emptied it onto the cleaner, all while screaming, I hate you! I'll deal with you! For the first time in years, everyone knew exactly who Hendrel was and they all shook their heads in disgust, making Hendrel feel overwhelmed. Surprisingly, our mom who had grown to love Hendrel even more than me, ran to her and consoled her, not scolding her for her reaction and totally ignoring the poor cleaner. The cleaner got up and stared at my mom and Hendrel angrily. Security! Take this woman out of here immediately! You will age for this. And you will age when you do this. What is she talking about? Remove her immediately! Mom, what's she saying? I'm scared. You will age for this. And you will age when you do this. The cleaner kept repeating this chant as security threw her out of the building. Happy that our mother was taking her side despite her bad behavior, Hendrel went back to her old self after that event. It seemed impossible to make her a better person, so I gave up on her. A week later, we were eating dinner when I noticed that something was wrong with Hendrel's face. I told her about it and she quickly ran to the mirror. Oh my god! Mom! My face! Oh my god! What is this? Hendrel's face had changed and she looked at least five years older than her current age. Ah! She picked up random stuff and started throwing them around the house. When she turned back to us to talk, she looked even older. Oh my god! We came to the realization that whenever Hendrel had any of her frequent mood swings or threw a tantrum, she aged a little bit more. It was terrible, but I was happy that it was happening. What do I do, sis? You know what to do. To prevent her from aging, Hendrel had to change her behavior totally until the good behavior became a solid and true part of her. When we noticed that she was actually changing for the better, we decided to help her search for the cleaner, despite being unsure that this new, nice Hendrel was permanent. Our efforts were all to no avail as no one knew who the cleaner was. Finally, we gave up, and Hendrel accepted her new face as punishment for her past sins. All she could do now was to work on her behavior and avoid aging more, so she did. Heather, I'm sorry for causing you and everyone else pain in the past. Can you truly forgive me? I was helping her style her hair. She made me place a cloth over her eyes and she couldn't bear to look at herself in the mirror. Was I ever truly angry with you? You're my annoying older twin sister and I have no choice but to love you. We both laughed until a tiny teardrop fell from her eye. She quickly wiped it off, but it was too late. I had already seen it. Was she truly remorseful? Christmas time finally arrived and the whole family gathered at the dinner table for Christmas dinner. That was when I saw it. I turned to mom who was seated beside me and whispered in her ears. After a few seconds of observation, she turned back to me and smiled. She had seen it too. She handed an empty stainless plate to Hendrel who had confusion written all over her face. She wanted to know what we were whispering about and immediately she looked at the plate and she saw it too. It was her face. It had become normal again. Tears of joy instantly streamed down her face as she apologized for everything and promised to be a changed person. She had said this numerous times in the past, but this time, I knew she meant her promise. Hey Tiffany! I waved as I pulled up next to her as she hopped out of her car. I parked quickly and met her. Hey Sonia! Another week working at the mall. I will never understand why you'd want to do this. You're rich. I laughed. <laughs> There's more to life than being rich. I nudged her playfully. And besides, my parents are rich. I just enjoy helping people and I want to make something of myself, by myself, you know? At this point, I didn't realize that a change of events was about to shift my entire life. Want to know what they are? Keep watching. Hey, Mr. Eguiler. Tiffany winked at me as she attended to a customer. Every Saturday, a cute guy walked into the store and looked around, but would never buy anything. However, today, he approached me. Hi. His dazzling blue eyes looked into mine. He scratched his head nervously. Hi, how can I help you? I smiled politely. I know you don't know me, but... He cleared his throat and spoke quickly. 
Can I take you to the movies sometime? Sure, why not? He told me his name was Dante and we exchanged numbers. Over the next few weeks, we spoke every day. He was funny and really easygoing. Eventually, we did go to the movies on a date. After the movies, we went on other dates. And after three months, we were officially a couple. One evening, as we watched a movie, I turned to Dante and asked, What type of pizza should we bring to Tiffany's this weekend? Huh? Dante looked at me confused. Saturday. Tiffany asked us to come over to watch a movie this weekend, and we said we'd bring a pizza. Oh yeah, how about Hawaiian and pepperoni? Sounds good. But this wasn't the only incident where I spoke with Dante and he seemed clueless. One time he forgot we made reservations for dinner. Another time he forgot Tiffany's name. But the final straw for me was when he ordered caramel popcorn with nuts at the movies when he knew that I was allergic to nuts. When we got back to the car after the movie, I turned to him. Dante, what's going on with you? I feel as though you're two different people sometimes. Dante lowered his eyes. I'm so sorry, Sonia. I knew I should have told you sooner, but I was kind of embarrassed and I didn't want you to think I was a freak. I held his hand. Why would I think you're a freak? Dante sighed heavily. When I was seven years old, I got into a car accident and I hit my head. Dad said I had amnesia for about two months before everything came back. Everyone thought I'd make a full recovery, but shortly after I regained my memory, some of my short-term memory gained gaps. So basically, sometimes I'd forget and other times I won't. I'd understand if you want to break things off and never want to speak with me again. Dante, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I pulled him close and kissed him. You're the only one I want. Dante smiled. How about we go to my house for a bit before I drop you off? I nodded. <laughs> I had never been to Dante's house before. When we pulled up to the front gate, my eyes widened. The house was gorgeous. It looked like something from a rich and famous magazine. This is beautiful, I said as we drove up to the house. Once settled with a glass of wine, I asked, so tell me about your family. I'm not really close with my family. After mom passed, we grew apart. I squeezed his hand. I'm so sorry, don't worry. Things usually work themselves out. Dante quickly changed the subject. We hung out for a few hours before he dropped me home. While at the mall, looking for an anniversary gift for my parents one afternoon, I saw Dante and was about to approach him when the guy he was talking to spun around. But then I felt my jaw drop. The guy looked exactly like Dante. I tilted my head. Two of them? How? When Dante turned, I hid between the clothes racks outside a clothing store until Dante and the other guy walked away. I ran all the way to my car. After I cried a few minutes in my car, it dawned on me. That was probably why Dante didn't remember everything, because there were two of them. I mean, who does that? My sadness quickly turned to anger. If the guys want to play games, then play games we must. I turned on the engine and drove out of the mall parking lot. I went along with the twin charade. Over time, I was able to figure out which twin was which. I called them Dante 1 and Dante 2. Dante 1 had a small mole right above his eyebrow, and Dante 2 didn't. My plan to use them was only supposed to be for a few months, then I would tell them that I knew what they were up to. However, I realized after three months that Dante 1 was the only twin that came to meet me. Eventually, my revenge slipped away and I fell in love with Dante. I can't help who I fall in love with, can I? After one year, Dante 1 asked me to marry him, and I agreed. About two weeks before the wedding, I overheard Dante 1 on the phone, and my blood ran cold. Listen, Chuck, once I marry this chick, I'll have all the money that I need. I decided to hire a private investigator to dig up all the dirt on Dante One and his family. First off, Dante One's name was Alexandro and his brother's name was Aiden. They made money by swindling rich women. Mr. Finley, their father, lost his company about seven years ago, around the same time their mother got sick. Within a year, she passed away and the boys blamed their father since he couldn't afford proper health care for her and abandoned him. Once their father re-established himself, the brothers tried to re-enter his life, but he cut them off completely and removed them from his will. Dante too was recently widowed. After six months of marriage, his wife passed away in her sleep. The family of the woman thought foul play was involved, but they could never prove it. Since then, Dante too had been married four more times and Dante one was married three times before. All wives died the same, but with their gambling addiction, the money was never enough. I knew it was time to end the charade. Thanks for coming with me to tell Dante the wedding is off.
I said as I turned the key and walked into Dante's house. I'd have it no other way. I'm ready for this. Tiffany pulled out the rolling pin from her purse. Tiffany followed me to Dante's office. I pushed open the door and stepped into the office. Tiffany and I froze. There stood Dante 1 and Dante 2. Before I realized what was happening, Dante 1 and Dante 2 overpowered Tiffany and I. The last thing I remembered was Tiffany slumped to the ground before I was knocked unconscious. When I woke up, Tiffany and I were on a boat, bound and gagged. Grab her legs! Aiden nodded to Alexandro. I looked on in horror as Tiffany wiggled and squirmed as they picked her up and tossed her overboard. No! I screamed through my gag. Tears rolled down my face. Tiffany was dead and it was my fault. What's the plan for this one? Aiden kicked me as Alexandro started the engine of the boat. We have to stick to the plan. Chuck wants his money. Once we docked, I was blindfolded and taken to another location. When the blindfold was removed, I was in a dungeon-like room that smelled horrid. There was a hole in the ground for a toilet and a small bench on the corner. I was shackled. Alexandro told me to call my parents and tell them that we were going to elope and I needed to sound happy. That was the hardest two minutes of my life. I didn't know if after that phone call I'd ever see or hear my parents' voices again. My parents gave us their blessing and I told them I'd be off the grid for the next three months and they shouldn't worry about me. I promised them that they would hear from me as soon as I returned. Alexandro threatened me to put on a wedding dress and pictures were posted on my social media page. After Aiden forged our marriage certificate, a month later they faked my death. They said I died in a boating accident after Alexandro and I took a private cruise ship to a remote island. Alexandro, because he was my husband, got all my assets. After six months of being a prisoner, I was able to escape after Aiden accidentally left my dungeon door unlocked. It took me three days before I arrived at my parents' house. Sonia? Mom screamed as she hugged me and brought me inside. Dad ran into the room. Margaret, what did you say? He looked at mom before he realized I was in the room. My parents took me to a private doctor who ran some tests on me. They never revealed to the doctor my true identity. The doctor recommended that I get some rest and place me on a strict diet until I was able to consume foods as I should. About two weeks after my escape, my parents paid not only for me to have plastic surgery, but they also had a full makeover. We also legally changed our names. They knew that the twins were probably still looking for me and they weren't about to lose me twice. After we healed from the plastic surgery, we moved to another country and hoped to start a new life. But what do you do when you try to start a new life? But your old life comes back to haunt you. While shopping at a store, I saw Tiffany assisting a customer. Yes, you heard right. How could this even be possible? I couldn't let this pass up. I hired a young lady, Amanda, to befriend Tiffany. I told her what to say and how to act. We also changed her name to Stephanie. Once Amanda built a relationship with Tiffany, I told her to invite her to the club. We wired Amanda and sent two private security guards to look after her just in case something went wrong. While at the club, Alexandro and Aiden showed up. Hey Stephanie, I'd like you to meet my two brothers, Aiden and Alexandro. My jaw dropped. Her brothers? Tiffany explained that her father had an affair with his secretary who died during childbirth. But unlike her brothers, she took her mother's last name, not her father's. Further into the night, I found out that I was a target the first week Tiffany met me at the mall, and I played right into her hand. I hired a private investigator to follow Mr. Finley for about two weeks before I made my move. Mr. Finley was an older, handsome version of his sons. I knew I had to play this carefully to pull this off. Did I feel bad for involving Mr. Finley in this mess? Maybe just a little, but that didn't stop me from doing it. On Friday afternoons, Mr. Finley visited art galleries. I made sure that I was at the last art gallery he visited that afternoon. I walked up to him as he stared at one of the photos. Have you figured out what it is yet? Mr. Finley smiled at me. Not yet. Do you have any ideas? He smiled. It looks like a giraffe I drew when I was five. And when I asked mom what it was, she told me it was a dog. Mr. <laughs> Finley laughed heartily. We moved from picture to picture, and by the end of the night, we were having a late night drink at Mariano's, one of the most expensive restaurants in the city. It wasn't long before I won over Mr. Finley's heart, or should I say, Giovanni. After three months, Giovanni and I eloped. One lesson I learned from before, always have backup and cameras. 
Without telling Giovanni, I placed tiny cameras around the house and I paid a company to keep tabs on my stepchildren. I got word that they planned to kidnap me. On the night of the kidnapping, I noticed when they entered the house and I pressed my alarm which alerted the police. I sat in the office and waited for them to barge in. What do you want? I raised my hands in the air. Alexandro, Aiden, and Tiffany all wore black masks and black clothing. We just want to kidnap you for a few days. Your husband will pay a hefty sum to return you unharmed, Tiffany said. Let's just grab her and get her out of here, Alexandro said impatiently. Tiffany walked behind the table and grabbed my arms while Aiden kept the gun on me. Just then, the office door opened. It was Giovanni. What in the world is going on here? Giovanni looked around the room. Uh, sir, stay right there. Aiden tried to disguise his voice. Aiden, is that you? Giovanni grabbed the mask off the person closest to him. It was Alexandro. Distracted, I slapped the gun from Aiden's hand and it fell to the floor. Tiffany, Aiden, and I scrambled to retrieve the gun. In the scuffle, the gun went off twice. Everyone froze. Giovanni groaned and his knees buckled. While Alexandro held his side, we all looked at where the shot came from. Tiffany pulled off her mask. Her eyes were wide with fear as she dropped the gun from her hand. Tiffany and I ran to Giovanni's side while Aiden ran to aid his brother. Tiffany, we have to go. Aiden tried to grab Tiffany's hand as he supported Alexandro with his other arm. Dad! Tiffany screamed. Fine. Aiden retorted and left the room with Alexandro. A few seconds after they left the room, I heard sirens and police officers barge into the room. Giovanni was rushed to the hospital and Tiffany was placed in handcuffs. The police questioned me at the hospital while Giovanni was in surgery. So how did my story end? Giovanni died and I now have a net worth of $100 million. Tiffany, Aiden, and Alexandro spent consecutive life sentences in prison for breaking and entering, attempted kidnapping, attempted murder, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. After Giovanni's death, I opened a foundation in remembrance of him to help people who needed financial assistance. It's not a fairy tale ending. However, it was the ending that I deserved.